<clears throat> All right, if you open your Bibles to Judges 19, Judges in chapter number 19, we're going to read verses 1 through 8 to begin, but we will cover the whole chapter. When you find your place, I do invite you to stand as we honor God with the reading of his word. Judges 19, verse number 1, And it came to pass in those days when there was no king in Israel, that, er, that there was a certain Levite sojourning on the side of Mount Ephraim, who took to him a concubine out of Bethlehem, Judah. And his concubine played the whore against him, and went away from him unto her father's house to Bethlehem, Judah, and was there four whole months. And her husband came, arose and went after her to speak friendly unto her and to bring her again, having his servant with him and a couple of asses. And she brought him to her father's house. And when the father of the damsel saw him, he rejoiced to meet him. And his father-in-law, the damsel's father, retained him, and he abode with him three days. So they did eat and drink and lodge there. And it came to pass on the fourth day, when they arose early in the morning, that he arose up to depart. And the damsel's father said unto him, uh, to his son-in-law, Comfort thine heart with a morsel of bread, and afterward go, ye, or go your way. And they sat down and did eat and drink, and both of them together. Uh, for the damsel's father had said unto the man, Be content, I pray thee, and tarry all night, and let thine heart be merry. And when the man rose up to depart, his father-in-law urged him, Therefore, lodge there again. And he arose early in the morning on the fifth day to depart, and the damsel's father said, Comfort thine heart, I pray thee, and tarry until afternoon. And they did eat both of them. Let's pray. Father, as we are to the preaching and teaching part of the service, Father, once again I ask that you would empty me of myself, Father, that you would cleanse me of my sin, and that you would fill me with thine Holy Spirit, that I may preach thus saith the word of the Lord. Father, as we discuss this awful story, uh, Lord, I ask that you would help us. Lord, I know it's not an exciting story, and it's, it's a sad story, Lord, but I ask that you would help us to stay focused and engaged, or that we may you be able to use this story to help us make good decisions and not go and make the decisions that these folks have made. Lord, I just ask that you would have your will and your way in the rest of the service. Lord, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you. you. may be seated. And may God bless the reading of his word. The subject is the evil nature of man. That's my title, the evil nature of man. We talked about last week, last Sunday evening, how uh, one Levite sojourned to help bring... Dan into more idolatry, and and not only that Levite did, but the grandson of Moses helped erect some idols uh, for the tribe of Dan. And now we have a it, that was he uh, this uh, that Levite was a sur sojourning Levite, and we have another one before us today. And reading this chapter and studying it and going over it and. Uh, it's pretty depressing of, verse, of chapters 18 and chapters 19 of two spiritual leaders or supposed to be spiritual leaders did so harm in the country and the nation of Israel. They, they, were, they, were, wicked, they were wicked spiritual, supposedly spiritual leaders. They were Levites. But we have another Levite before us today. And... This other Levite, in verses 1 through 10, this sojourning Levite goes and gets his concubine. A Levite with a concubine. Right there, ought to, ought to a red flag ought to fly up. That's not supposed to happen. 
right? But he, he's a sojourning Levite from the tribe of Levi, and he has a concubine, marries this, has this concubine, and, and the Bible describes this damsel as his wife, and he's a husband, but anyway, he goes back. His concubine leaves his, this guy's where he's living and goes back to her dad's house, which could be a good thing, but it says she goes off a whoring. And I, if you read the rest of the story, and you're gonna, as we go through it, you're going to find out that there's probably a good reason she left him. Maybe not to go a whoring, but a good reason that she left him. And she goes to her father's house and stays there four months. And he does, the, the Levite decides to, you know what, I need to go get my concubine. So he goes and gets, goes after her, goes to her father's house, and her father does a good job at showing hospitality. I mean, he, as he shows up to the house, her, it says the damsel's father was excited, glad to see him. She, you know, maybe because he was, you know, because he knew what kind of daughter he had, and he was happy to see the Levite, but he goes and gets his, his concubine, and Think about this, for five days, or for three days, he eats and drinks with his father-in-law, and on the third day, he's getting ready to take her and leave. Well, dad gets up and says, you know what, don't leave, won't you comfort yourself and eat and, and enjoy yourself, so they, he stays again and does it another day, and on the fifth day, the dad tries it again to try to get him to stay and to eat, but he does in the morning, and in the afternoon, he's getting, he, they get ready to leave on that fifth day in the afternoon. So, another Levite with a concubine, and in verses 11 through 21, I want you to notice something here in verses 11 through 21, they, they, as they travel, look at verse number 11. And when they were, let's go back to verse 10. But the man would not tarry that night on that fifth day. And he rose up and departed and came over against Jebus, which is Jerusalem. Remember, Jerusalem has not yet been captured. It's, there's still Canaanites. There's still there's a Jebusite uh, town there, or Jebusites there that control Jerusalem. And it says that they come by it, and Jerusalem and there were with him two asses saddled with, with his concubine also was with him. And when they, in verse 11, and when they were by Jabez, the day was far spent. And the servant said unto his master, Come, I pray thee, and let us turn into the city of the Jebusites and lodge in it. And his master said unto him, We will not turn aside hither into the city of a stranger that is not of the children of, the, of Israel, we will pass and go over to Gibeah. So they come to Jerusalem, and the, his servant says, Hey, it's night time. Let's go into Jerusalem, and let's lodge there and for the night. And the Levi says, uh, You know, I'm not too comfortable going into Jerusalem. It's, it's a Jebusite-controlled city, and I want to go... To the, where the house of Israel is. I'm not comfortable. Maybe he didn't feel safe there one way or the other, but they pass on and go on to the outskirts of Gibeah. In verse uh, number 13, and, and he said unto his servant, Come, let us draw near to one of these places to lodge all night in Gibeah or in Ramah. And they passed on and went their way, and, they, and the sun went down with them, uh, when they were by Gibeah, and which belonged to the Benjamin, which belonged to Benjamin, and they turned aside thither to go in and to lodge in Gibeah. And when he went in, he sat down on the street of the city, and there was no man that took them into the house no, to lodge. And so, so they go, they leave. They don't want to go into Jerusalem. And they passed by and go to one of the to Gibba, and they couldn't. And while they were there, he, it says that he sat down on the street, and they couldn't find anybody there to give him lodge. And we're going to see that he has everything that he needs with him. 
You're, as we continue to read in this chapter, he has everything for his donkeys. He has food, and all he's looking for is a place to sleep. That's all he's ask, looking for is a place to sleep. And look at verse number 16. And behold, there came an old man from his work out of the field at even, which also of Mount Ephraim, and he sojourned in Gibeah, but the men of the place were Benjamites. And so we, he, there's this older guy coming in who's when working. He's not even, he doesn't even live there. He's a sojourner, but he sees this guy. And when he lifted up his eyes, he saw a wayfaring man in the street of the city. And the old man said, where, whether thou go, goest thou and whence comest thou? He goes, where are you going and where would you come from? And he said unto them, we are passing from Bethlehem, Judah, toward the side of Mount Ephraim from thence on. I and I went to Bethlehem, Judah, but I am now going to the house of the Lord, and there is no man that receiveth me to the house. And so uh, this older man comes, and he sees this guy sitting there, and the, the Levite lies to him. He says, we're going to the house of the Lord. And he wasn't going to the house of the Lord. He lied to this guy, and... He says, I'm a sojourner. I'm headed back over that away. And, uh, and in verse 19, he says, Yet there, he, he says, No man receiveth me. In verse 18, verse 19, Yet there is both straw of provender and for, uh, for our asses, and there is bread and wine also for me, and for thy handmaid, and for the young man which is with thy servants, there is no want of anything. And the old man said, Peace be with thee. So the guy, the, the Levi, he doesn't understand why no one is inviting him at home to lodge for the night. He goes, I have everything I need. I have everything I need, and there's no one here inviting me in. And the older man says, Peace be with you, right? However, let all thy wants lie upon me. Only lodge not in the street. Now, this old man knows something that this guy doesn't know. So the old man says, listen, you have everything you need. You can come with me. Only thing I'm asking, don't stay out in the street. Don't, don't, don't stay out in the street in the city. And you're going to find out why if you, haven't, uh, if you haven't ever read this chapter. So he brought him in the house and gave uh, provident unto his asses, and they washed their feet, and they did eat and drink. And so we see that this Levite meets this older man, and this older man knew that there would be trouble in the streets. The third thing we see is trouble in Gibeah. This is where it's going to start getting a little crazy, sad, and even scary. Verse 22, Now as they were making their hearts merry, behold, the men of the city, certain sons of Belial, beset the house round about. They come and they surround the house. And beat at the door and spake to the master of the house, of the, the old man, saying, look at this, Bring forth the man that came into thine house, that we may know him. What does this sound like to you? Sodom and Gomorrah, doesn't it? The men of the city of Sodom and Gomorrah come to Lot's house because of the, uh, the two angels that are there, and they're like, hey, bring them out. We want to have our way with them. And th we see this here. You, you would think from the history of Sodom and Gomorrah of what God did to that, those cities that we would have, that maybe these folks would have learned their lesson. But no, we have some men, a city filled with homosexuality, sodomy. And the man of the master of the house went out unto them and said unto them, Nay, my brother. He's like, No, my brothers. I pray you do not so wickedly, seeing that this man come into my house, do not this folly. So he says, Listen, well, why are you trying? Why are you coming in to embarrass me? This guy, he's my. I'm hosting this guy. Don't do this. Don't don't go off and do this wickedness. Behold, here is my daughter, a maiden, and his concubine, and this guy's concubine. Them will I bring out now, and humble ye them, and do, look at this, and do with them 
what seemeth good unto you. Haven't we read that phrase before? Doeth what you seem good with them. What seemeth good unto you, but unto this man do no vile thing. So, so this older guy goes, hey, I have a daughter, and this man has a concubine. Take them. Lot does the same thing, doesn't he? Here's my daughters. Take them. Not these men that I have. Don't, don't, don't take them. No. Take them. And so uh, the, uh, he's offering these sexual, deviant men of the city, his daughter and this man's concubine. Look at this. But the men would not hearken unto him. They didn't want those women. They wanted him. So the man, the, this Levite, look at this, took his concubine and brought her forth unto them, and they knew her. What does he do? He takes her, shoves her out of the house. And it says, well, look, look, look at what, I mean, it, it's bad. Right forth unto them, and they knew her and abused her all the night until the morning, and when the day began to spring, they let her go. Then came the woman into the dawn, dawning of the day, and fell at the door of the man's house where her Lord was till it was night. Did you get that? This Levite, the, the place that this Levite had to be. You, at the beginning of the story, you think that he loves her because he goes back to her, her father's house and gets her. Now we come to the part of the story and, and, and where uh, these uh, sodomites want to come, these homosexuals want to come and take him where he's staying, offers his daughter and, and this Levite's concubine, and they don't want us, and, and they say, no, we want you, we want the man and that's in there. And so the man gets his, his concubine, shoves, him, shoves her out the door and says, have at it. And guess what? They have at it. They tear her up. They abuse, they abuse her. And they abuse this woman to the point to where she comes back. She's, she's dying. This is a sad state of affairs. And what gets worse is the attitude of the Levite. The attitude of this so-called spiritual leader towards this woman when she shows back up. Let's continue to read. And our Lord rose up in the morning and opened the doors of the house and went out to go his way. And behold, the, woman's, the woman, his concubine, was fallen at the door of the house, and her hands were upon the threshold. And he said to her, Up! Let's go! The man just got up from sleep and ready to go. His wife was being, his concubine was being raped in the city, abused, while he was in that man's house sleeping. She's at the threshold of the door, dying, because of the abuse that she just was, 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 took. And he says, let's get up, let's get up and go. Up. Right? Up and let us be going. But none answered. She didn't answer him. Look at this. The man took her up on an ass. And the man rose up. Uh, answered then, the man took her up upon an ass. And the man rose up and got him. Unto his place. He could, she, she couldn't even answer him. Get up. He said let's get up and go. And he gets up. And throws her over the donkey. Like a sack of potatoes or a piece of meat. This is the attitude of this guy. And, and I'm reading this. And I'm getting this. And I'm writing my. I mean I don't really have an outline. It's per, kind of a narrative. Uh, of a story here. And I'm like. This man, if I, if I knew this man, I would take him 
to the back, the back 40, kill him and bury him. His attitude towards this woman. You, you know, they say the, uh, the, uh, you can tell the moral decay of a country has, on how they treat their women. And, and you can see that the moral decay of, this, uh, of Israel now, because often we always see, you know, there was, in many times that we've read, and there was no king at this time, and everyone did what was right in their own eyes. And look, verse 29 and 30, And when he was coming to his house, look at this, he took a knife and laid hold on his concubine and divided her together with her bones into twelve pieces and sent her unto all the coast of Israel. And it was so that all that saw it said, look at this, there was none such deed done nor seen from that day, from the day that 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 the children of Israel came up out of the land of Egypt into this day. Consider it, take advice, and speak your minds. Sad story. If you needed a story for a horror movie, you got it. You have a sojourning, a traveling Levite. Supposed to be, out of the tribe of Levi, supposed to be a spiritual leader. Has a concubine. Winds up in Gibbon. Gibbon. And sends her out to be sexually abused to the point of death. Has no regard for her. Tells her to get up. She can't get up because she's on the point of death. Throws her on his donkey and has her way and when he gets home, either she's dead or he murders her. Because if you go into the next chapter, you'll see he, he, he talks about it. So whether he murders her or she's dead, he takes a knife to this woman, splits her up in 12 pieces, and sends them to the 12 tribes. Oh, America, we're, we're different than them. We're different. Hey, we've come to the age of enlightenment. This is what we're doing. Our nation is doing what is right in our own eyes. We're, we're legalizing what God calls an abomination. Not only have we legalized it, we're celebrating it. And if you're not celebrating it, you're what's wrong with this country. That's what they say. And the sad thing about it is this. We have men and churches who are like the Levite in chapter 18, setting, helping their churches worship idols in, in, in chapter 18. And you have other spiritual leaders in like in chapter 19 supporting, homo, supporting bad behavior, sin, Supporting, we have so-called spiritual leaders in churches today saying that homosexuality is okay. You can still be a Christian in homosexuality. No, you cannot. No more can an adulterer. If adultery is sin, homosexuality is sin. Now, granted, more churches, we, 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 you know, we, we're going to deal with fornication and adultery more than we do homosexuality because an active homosexual can't be a member of a church. It's biblical. And so, uh, you know, the thing is, is we, we, we see this in our, own, in our own society. The Levite is the epitome of the depravity of man in Israel. He is. He is the epitome of the depravity of man in Israel. You know the book of Judges? It starts off with Caleb blessing his daughter. So you know, he goes up and he says, Hey, if anyone will take this city, I will give them my daughter to wife. And what happens? His younger brother takes the city, gives his daughter, and his daughter comes to Caleb and says, Hey, 
She's riding upon this donkey and gets off and talks to her dad, Caleb. And Caleb says, what do you want? He goes, she goes, you've given me this land. Also, I, I want the springs over here too. The Judges starts off by celebrating a woman. Judges ends by Israel, this city, discarding this woman. Starts off. Judges starts off doing and obeying God. Right? They do. They, we start, they start off good in the book of Judges. Caleb, one of, the, one of the spies, good spies, starts off good and well. Now that we're at the end of Judges, we see how depri the depravity of man, how bad man has really gotten. Everyone did what was right in their own eyes. Did Israel still not have, did they, as right now, as we're in Judges 19, did they not have the law of God? They had the law of God. They had the law of Moses. Well, they had the law of Moses. Why couldn't they? Because you know what they did? They did what so many of us do today. We have the Bible. We have, a lot of Christians and believers have a Bible a lot of Americans have a Bible, but you know what they did? That's what they did. Now, 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 they all didn't have a copy, right? They didn't all have a copy. But they had the Ark of the Covenant. Where God was. And yet they still did what was right in their own eyes. Folks, you can have a Bible, you can attend a church, and you can still have the mindset of I want to do what's right in my own eyes. Why? Because you neglect to surrender to the Lordship of Jesus. If Jesus, if you neglect and refuse to, to humble yourself and put yourself underneath the lordship of Jesus, you're going to do what is right in your own eyes. You're going to look at this Bible and you're going to say, I don't agree with that. That, that you know, I, I think this. Well, I remember the Bible saying this. And you will do what is right in your own eyes. This is our society. No wonder our society is so bad. We're trying to teach people we come from a goo from out of the ocean. That all was, you know, nothing was there then, bam, that we have the universe and the worlds and planets and the universe and the earth and we, we started from some microorganism out of, the, out of the ocean and evolved and evolved and evolved. Eventually we crawled out of the ocean, got rid of our tail and... Well, when you're no different than an animal, when you're teaching people you're no different than an animal, what do you expect? You should, you're going to expect animal-like behavior. Why do prisoners act like that in jails? Because they're told they're animals. You tell somebody that they're an animal, and you keep telling them that they're animals, they're going to act like animals because... Let me ask you, when a lion kills, when a, when a prey... When, when, when an animal kills a, an antelope, do we go arrest a lion? Well, that's what an animal does. And so we see the depravity of man, and this Levite, he is the epitome of the depravity of man. We see this chapter... We see in this chapter what man does when man does what is right in his own eyes with no regard for God. Israel began in the land. Look at Israel began in this land being distinguished from the Canaanites. The Canaanites were idol worshipers, right? Come on. They worshiped idols, they worshiped Baal. They were set apart. They followed God. They listened to God. Uh, they did what God told them to do. 
And now, they're not distinguishable. In fact, the canonization of Israel has come about. Let's talk about the church for a moment. When Jesus started the church, the apostles were different than the rest of Israel. In the history of the church, we have the the history of the early of the church, right? In Acts, they were different than the rest of the world. Let's fast forward to twenty twenty three. The canonization of the church today. The church, the world moves further left. The church follows in its steps. Before long, you're going to, you know, we have folks, if you go to a church, what is distinguished as a church today, you may find yourself no different than going to some other TED Talk. That's all you're going. You're going, you're, you're hearing some fancy music, and you're getting a TED Talk. That's not what church is. Church is what we saw, that, what we discussed this morning. Neither is there any man named given among men under heaven whereby we must be saved. There's a difference between church and the world. And if you disregard God and His Word, you will be, you will find it, you will. Be, be finding yourself canonizing. No difference between you and this world. You could be saved. Still God's chosen people. Right? Still God's chosen people, but yet there, there, there's no distinguishing between them and idol worshipers. Folks, be Look at what, what, what he says in verse number 30. Look what it says in verse number 30 of chapter 19. Verse number 30. He says, consider it, take advice, speak your mind. Take counsel, and you better speak up. Because you better consider what's going on you better consider what the world's doing you better consider it and you better speak up you better say something isn't that what we're supposed to do as believers preach see what the world what's going on and preach the word of God speak up folks if we're not careful if you not careful we will see ourselves doing exactly the same thing. In chapter 20, you're going, we're going to see a civil war. And it all begins because this Levite says what happened. He doesn't tell. He doesn't tell. Israel gathers together in the temple. The city of the temple is, and they gather together. Because of what this Levite sent out. They're gathered together. And he doesn't tell them what he did. He didn't tell him, he didn't tell them that he pushed his concubine out. With the, you know what the old man should have done? He should have shut the door and said, no, nobody's coming out to you. But the Levite said, take her. Leave me alone. He doesn't tell Israel that. And Israel breaks out into a civil war. They wind up killing the men of Giba. Oh, it's a hard fight they have. It takes three battles to get them. But Israel gets them. Folks, you better learn. You better take note of what is going on in, in your life today. And if it's not right, you find yourself disregarding God, disregarding His word in your life and in your family's life, or you as a man leading your family, you better take note because 
it won't be long. And you'll be pushing your family out the door for your own selfish, wicked desires. I've seen it over and over and over and over. When believers decide to neglect God, set the word of God aside, and start going after what they think is right, what they want, they push their family out the door. And they, are, they become unrecognizable. And the thing is, it's a choice. It's a choice. Choose God, choose life. Choose the world, choose death. Can't sit on the fence. Sitting on the fence, you choose death and not life. Father, as